four two. That's about there. And next thing, to get to three, I gotta go all the way over to nine. All the way over to nine. Ladies and gentlemen, nod your head if you understand where those points are coming from. Okay. Next up, am I going to have any point over here? No. I can't even plug in a negative. This is going to be completely one-sided graph. It's just going this way. So on this one, I go, oh, all right. I'm going to draw a nice, smooth curve, starting at origin, and it keeps on going. It actually flattens out a little bit, a little bit more than that. In fact, if you look at this, what this actually is, value for value, is similar to a shape we just had. What was that shape at the beginning part of the class? It's like half of a parabola on its side. Took the parabola and went just like that, you'd get that shape and cut off half of it. You can't have the bottom half, otherwise it's not a function. But this top half right here, that's very similar to a parabola. You with me on this? Now the next one, we gotta go kind of like we only have like a minute or so. Does that have a name? Yeah, it's a square root function. Square root <laughs> I mean, that line? You know, no. like, yeah, the parabola. No, they're actually, I mean, it's, it's named after, the parabola's the only one that we really have a name at this point. We're going to have hyperbolas later on. But this one, I mean, it's not called the V, right? That's <laughs> the name. We call it a V because it looks like a V. Uh, but that's the absolute value function, and this is the square root function. We can name it Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, the next one, I don't know, last minute here. I am also going to pick some points that have that, that are good for us on, on this case. Um, that's going to allow us to find square roots after we do the inside addition. So zero is going to work. In our case, I want you to notice something, please. If I have negative one, it's going to be okay in this case. Do you see why? I take negative one plus two. Well, that's one. Uh, negative two is okay. That's fine. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, right? Yes. Turn to 0, 0. We can do that. Negative 3 would not be OK. So I'm going to pick these three points and then maybe 1. I'm sorry, um, 2. Because 2 plus 2 is going to give me 4. So let's try this out. If I take 2, I get the square root of 2 plus 2. That's giving me the square root of 4, 4, 2 itself. 0 would give me, no, I probably don't want to pick 0. I would probably want to pick something like, one. No, I don't want to pick one either, do I? <laughs> Maybe just stick with these three points. Uh, just, I just want you to see what happens here. Negative one plus two, that's going to give you positive one. That's going to give you one. If I do negative two, square root of negative two plus two <coughs> is zero. Square root of zero, zero. If I plot these points, two, two, negative one, one, negative two, zero, Negative two zeros here, negative one ones here, and then two two is over here. Do you see that I get the same shape of graph? Same shape of graph, right? Same exact shape. What happened? It shifted it which way? It shifted two spots to the left. Do you see? This is interesting. Most people make a mistake right here. I, I know I'm, I'm going over by like 30 seconds or so, but uh, oh, a minute. So, so most people make a mistake and go, oh, plus should be a shift to the right. That's how we want to do it, right? But that plus right here within the function, it says this. You plug in a number, it speeds up what's going on, like a timeline. It says, if it happened here, now it's happening sooner. Sooner on a timeline is this way. Does that make sense to you? This graph is now happening sooner. You're adding two to it. That's why it's shifting it left, not right. That's kind of the key point there. How many people understood today? Good.